then that like goes on and I was like kind of popping off and like cussing every other four words and then I was like oh good no it, whatever like, <gasps> it's for the vibes it's for the vibes I was like you know okay she I have her questions if do you want should I like read them and then whoever wants to answer can answer or yeah that's fine they have them in here so if she I switched said, my wi-fi is it gonna knock me off oh I don't know I don't think so but like I do it now before like we're I'm really deep and yeah here. Convo. I'll wait for whatever. It takes two seconds. I have that song from TikTok stuck in my and I don't really like I don't really go on TikTok that much, but like you know the one it's like some listening to me, it's alright. Like I don't know why it's stuck in my head. Um should I just Oh, she's good. Okay, sick. Alright, so the questions that she put here were Oh, yes, I totally forgot. Haha, <laughs> good thinking, Lore. I think it was how to find your analytics for Instagram to put in your media kit. Like, Insta refreshes by the day, but what's a good place to find solid numbers for a long time frame, if that makes sense? Also, what are good points and important things to put in a media kit if you haven't had any brand deals yet? That is what she, those were her couple questions. So, I mean, whoever wants to take it away, feel free. Mackenzie, you want to vibe with this one? <laughs> I guess. So <laughs> I'll, I'll um, piggyback off you when you're done. So. As far as analytics go, I would assume happy birthday, Madison. Sorry. <laughs> happy birthday. Um, okay. So as far as analytics go, I know that you can look on Instagram, but again, social blue book gives you the analytics and it doesn't like it generalizes it. I don't know if it's by month or like how often it refreshes because I don't honestly change those analytics myself that much. Like I said, I change my followers and like those numbers that are most important, but I don't change my analytics that often. Um, I know that Instagram does it and that's like pretty accurate, but I also know that like some people choose to separate their analytics via YouTube blog, Instagram, whatever. Yeah, that's what I did on mine. Yeah, if you're going to your blog, um, usually your, if your WordPress is linked through Google Analytics, most most sites are linked through Google Analytics, and I know WordPress, like what I use, has like a really in-depth like overview, so you guys can look at the demographics, the age groups, all that other jazz, and important things to put in your media kit if you haven't had brand experience. Um, just at literally the exact same thing a normal person's media kit would have just minus the previous partnerships say what you'd be willing to do even if you don't have that experience i would still i think it's worthwhile to say um i'm willing to do giveaways i'm willing to do videos um instagram posts stories try on sessions all that jazz because it shows that and then when you go to pitch a brand honestly like when i started pitching brands i never used a media kit at first like I probably pitched for a whole year and a half, two years before I even had one. So, and, and plenty of brands said yes to me. Like, I don't think that it's a make or break factor. However, um, I think having one showcases, it's like a resume, you know, like it's easier because a super long pitch, like some brands are going to be like, that's too long. I don't have time to read all that. So they'll click out of it because of that. But um, I just lost my train of thought, but I had one other thing about the media kit. If you haven't worked with brands, um, pitching. Work with brands. Oh my god, it's like on the tip of my tongue. And can this person like not mow their lawn right now? <laughs> okay, if you think of it, it'll come back. Yeah, that's good advice though. Yeah, I mean, pretty much what I was gonna say too. So, I think just being able to showcase showcase oh, yourself in the best way is helpful. Okay, it came back. So another thing is that if you don't have brand experience, right? I like did a, I did a podcast interview yesterday and I talked about this a lot. Like when you are pitching a company and you don't have previous experience, it's okay to tell them that. Like in a job interview, when someone's like, what previous experience do you have? Like what other jobs have you worked at? And you're like, well, crap, like you need experience to get to get a job, but like what happens when it's your first job? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's okay to tell brands like, hey, like I, I don't have any previous experience, but I really want to learn. I really want to learn something. I want to gain experience. So maybe if I don't, even if I don't get paid or I'm not getting 700 pieces of clothing, maybe if it's for one thing, you can, it's okay to ask a brand and say like, I would really love to partner with one another to gain experience and for that like first step, like, and so many people will understand that, especially, like I said, because you are at that college age, like people are willing to help you. So 
um, it's okay to like say, I don't have a lot of experience, but I need experience. So I'm willing to work for free. I'm willing to work um, and do X amount, like whatever you need in order to benefit you just so it teaches me something. Mm -hmm. That's really good advice. And I don't, I haven't worked with that many brands. So I'm not sure if this is a great advice, but kind of what I was thinking is I'm going to start reaching out to brands this month and, um, or in June. And I want to like have an idea of like what I want to do with them. Not just like say like, I want to work with you. Like I kind of want to pitch them like a video idea or like a more concrete thing because I think it's harder to say no if like you present like a creative idea I don't know if you guys have had success with that 100%. yeah like brands want to see like that's like part of an initiative like when you go to a job interview you would say hey like I'm here to get the social media coordinator position this is why I'm good for it so like yesterday I sent a couple of pitches and I was like hi I've been busy embracing my inner cowgirl and I really would like to showcase your boots in a video that's discussing how to style cowgirl boots I think you'd be great to join you know what I mean like when you say exactly what it is exactly what you want to do with it brands are excited about that initiative and then after you give them that specific idea say of course if there are any other campaigns going on or if you have any ideas I would love to hear them and discuss more about it that way you still seem open-minded but you also seem like a go-getter because you have your idea like presented there for them I love that yeah what else? I have people coming out of the woodworks, man. <laughs> Snapchat, like, who are you? <laughs> I have a question about like setting prices for stuff. Cause I'm like, I don't know how much is too much, how much isn't enough. Mm -hmm. Cause I don't like asking for it. I'm like, yeah. Yeah, I feel like you gotta like, I get what you're saying, but at the same time, I know it's kind of like a help me to help you situation. Like yeah. you're doing like, think about how much time it takes to edit a YouTube video or like, think about how much time it takes to go out and like, like shoot something for a brand. Like, it's like, it's not, it's not, it's not free money. You know what I mean? I mean, yes, yeah. like th there could be like product exchange for it, which honestly I think is equally as great in the long yeah. run because it'll pay itself out, especially if, like once, I don't know if you are, but like once someone in general is monetized on YouTube, like it pays itself out anyways. Yeah. Um, especially like, I, I mean, I don't know about any other people that have done like, like, um, like dedicated sponsorship videos, but I always find that those just do so well. Like, I don't know why, but they just like always do. Like so well. which are like, they send me the clothes. Yeah. Those give me the most views, which makes me the most ad revenue, and will I'll make so many sales and commission that it like yeah, so it, it mm -hmm. works out. It's anyway. really no oh, she's frozen. Yeah, I mean, would it be nice if someone was paying me three hundred dollars on top of it? Yeah, but like, am I mad? No, because like I can't really complain. So yeah, yeah. um, there's uh, there's like a, a book that has a like a a website or something that like lets you calculate how like how much you should be making with the with your statistics I'll try to find it just remind me oh for like um views like that to, I think oh I looked it up I know what you're talking I about know. yeah there's a, there's a website for it I, yeah maybe yeah you know. if you've messed with social blue book social blue book gives you like per month too so it kind of tries to calculate like three months at a time I think so it'll tell you like your low range and your high range for like certain things and then if you're like pitching for brands two months in advance and it'll calculate your growth it'll be like well this will be your low and high range for june for july i didn't know that that's yeah that's that's, that's fire that's like the whole reason i got it <laughs> yeah, well for social blue book though what i was seeing is like you can only have one account on it though and then you got to yeah, pay. Mine never, mine never updates. Like it has my YouTube analytics from like eight months ago. I'm like, I've gained 8,000 subscribers in those months. You got to like refresh this. Yeah. I know uh, mine. Let me have YouTube and Instagram. And then I didn't want anything more than that, but it let me have two. Oh, that's yeah. So mine still it, because part of it, really? part of social blue book you have to pay for, I think. So yeah. That's what, like, you only yeah. have two free. Hmm. I might have to like take one off just to see like, yeah, maybe. Just to buy yeah, I have two and I haven't paid for anything. So maybe I just got lucky. Yeah, no, you could have. Maybe there was yeah. a 
Dale moment. As far as charging for brands goes, I'm not the person to ask because honestly, most times I'll like get asked and it'll be like apply to this deal. Like, you know how Maverick and like people like that will email you and say apply for this deal. All of my paid deals, I'll be so honest, have come from those things where they're like apply for this. You will get this product and X amount of money. And like, you can't counter those offers. It's like one set price. Mm -hmm. Um, and honestly, like I, the, the things that they have offered me, I'm like, for one Instagram picture, that seems more than enough. Like, like that's, that's making really good money because I'm going to be honest, taking one Instagram picture does not take more than one hour at the end of it to get ready and smile and have someone click. The you know what I mean? So like, mm, yeah. uh, definitely different for YouTube and Instagram. Yes. It depends like, on what you're yes. doing. But like I said, it's really important and necessary that you take unpaid things and that you do work without pay at first because like that gets you experience like it's not bad to do things without pay at the same time like now yeah that's what i've been doing now <laughs> i actually read this book it's by tessa and it's like her insta style book and it's a super cute book i recommend it to everyone but she talks about in there how she charges and obviously she has a much larger following than i do even but it's well, that's not saying much, <laughs> but she talks about how she thinks about how much money she wants to make per hour. Like if you had a minimum yeah. wage job, like thinking about a YouTube video and making a YouTube video takes hours and hours and hours, like thinking about the idea. And then also for YouTube and Instagram, you have to think that they're able to use that content long after your partnership is completed. And so I think that she really iterate, reiterates over and over again that you shouldn't sell yourself short. I know it is like 100% when you're first starting out, like you aren't going to be, you shouldn't expect to be paid a ton because you just have a lack of experience. But once you are more established, like not selling yourself short is, I feel like a really big situation. Wait, okay. Yeah. I just found something. So Distribution fee plus talent fee equals what you should charge. Let's start by understanding the difference between your distribution fee and your talent fee. Your distribution fee is how much it costs to be featured on your channel slash blog. Keep in mind that this price can great um, can vary great. Gr okay, so okay. this price can vary greatly based on five factors: follower count, engagement, quality of content, name slash facial slash recognition skills, demographics. Your talent fee is how much you already how much it already costs you to create the content. The no this number includes all costs associated with the campaign and your hourly rate. To figure out the basic minimum budget, calculate the cost of your photographer slash photo editor, the space you'll need to be shooting, hotel room, Airbnb, whatever, any props you'll need to purchase, food, candles, flowers, balloons, any clothing you'll need to buy. Sometimes a campaign will cause you to shoot off season, a winter fashion spread in the summer and you'll need to buy new clothes so the content looks fresh when you post it months later. Then you need to factor in your hourly rate, whether you're writing a blog post, self-producing a video, photo shoot, or working on set, those things take time and time is money. If you're just beginning, you might start at $25 an hour and increase your hourly rate as you have more experience and campaigns under your belt. Activities under this hourly rate will differ depending on the campaign, but should include negotiating with the casting agent one hour reading the brief and researching the advertiser two hours scouting and securing a location two hours creating a mood board of the shoot two hours shooting the content up to 10 hours you can add these two together and that is how much you should charge you can take a look at this handy dandy chart it will provide you with a healthy range for each tier and then it just has a, a chart this is just like a book I, I read, but um, wow. yeah, I could send that chart if that helps for anybody. I feel like it's also important to kind of like calculate some of the worth of all the work you've done to get to the point where a brand wants to work with you. Like so many people would be like, oh, like how did you get your Instagram followers? I'm like, well, when any of the shows that I was in came out, I would go on the fan pages and like so many pictures every single day and like so it was like so much work to build up like that. And I feel like that counts for something. Like, like it's not just like the in the moment uh, work. It's like the work that you've done in the past too. Mm -hmm. So definitely don't sell yourself short. 
No, go, go, go. I gotta look for something. I've never worked with a brand or anything, but I think that it's really important to remember that, like, not only are you helping their career, but YouTube or whatever platform you're working on is, like, your career, it's your job, and you want to be paid for a regular job, no matter what it was, fairly. So, like, don't feel like you have to be paid, like, a certain amount that you feel is below, like, your worth or something like that, just because they're, like, a lot bigger than you, because at the end of the day, this is, like, also your career as well I'm not that I don't know if I really have the place to say that but I said it no it's okay it says in here anything from like basically scratch to 99k should be charging 250 a range depending on where you fall in the spectrum from 250 to two thousand dollars for an Instagram post YouTube video is a thousand to five thousand photo and or video shoot 500 to 2,000. Look, I cannot imagine someone paying me a thousand. I know. Isn't that video. crazy? Like when I think about it, I'm like, damn, that, that must be nice. <laughs> <good>. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that says that's up to look. So I, mean, I know it's people. a lot of hard work. Like I do, but Wait. when it, your work is so fun, it doesn't feel like work. I know. So that's, that's what so makes hard. it seem like so much money to me is because I don't really like, I mean, I know I'm working really hard, but like when I film a video, I think, Oh, I'm doing something kind of fun for the day. Yeah. You know? Well, it says here that someone that has a million plus should be, oh my God. Instagram posts $7,500 plus dollars. YouTube video, $15,000 plus dollars. And photo and, and or video shoot, $10,000 plus dollars. Like, Think what? In one month, you could make, like, what most people make as an entry-level salary. Like, Well, that's why, that's why people like, like, Jeffree Star and, like, yeah and, like that's why they're so rich <laughs> okay but then i saw a video i think it was natalie barbu and she said oh, that my queen. the biggest the biggest deal that she turned away was like twenty thousand dollars and she does not have near a million subscribers or yeah. followers well because followers oh, doesn't measure your influence like if you yeah. have, engagement I, I think is more important but yeah like yeah. i have ten thousand subscribers but like if i had 1,000 sales in one week for a single company like that's to a company that's thousands of dollars on their part so like that's worth mentioning too yeah so I think it just gives me a little bit of hope and I guess like thinking now it's like build up the relationship that you have with the people who are following you so that when you are in a situation where brands are offering you things your subscribers and followers will trust you to then yeah. buy those things and participate in whatever you're talking about because I feel like once if they don't trust you they're not going to buy something from you and that's what keeps getting you deals yeah hold on I think someone's at my house to see me <laughs> <laughs> I mean this birthday queen I feel like this topic is like a lot there's like so many different things that like yeah stress not, maybe not stressful but I feel like once it involves money like I don't know sometimes I would feel like guilty if I'm overcharging or uh, like I don't want to do work that I'm not getting paid for so it's like a really tricky thing but I think that it's a good topic that we can keep bringing up especially as we like build our media kits and we can help each other by looking at those and yeah does anyone else have any questions so I know that last time, Laura, you were a big advocate for like reaching out through like LinkedIn and stuff. Yeah. But um, when it comes to like reaching out to brands on Instagram versus like through an email you find or something, yeah. like what is like the best luck you've had? So I send pretty much the same cold DM to everybody, honestly, and everyone answers normally, which is really cool. Um, I also. But, Oh, go ahead. I also d took a day and I was like, I'm going to DM 50 brands. Wait, didn't I tell you to do that? Yes, you did. <laughs> I did it. Yes. And I, I haven't done the next step, but I took Okay, but that's okay. This is a start. It's a start. It's a start. But most of them DM'd me back with how to apply to their affiliate program. Yeah, so perfect. That, I feel like if you're doing bigger brands, then more than likely you're going to get them saying, 
hey girl, I'm so glad you're interested in working with us. Here's a link to apply to our affiliate program. Good hey luck. Girl. Hey girl. Hey like, girl. Like, <laughs> no, okay. I literally, I can tell you guys what I say if that helps. I don't care if you use the same thing. It works. So you might as well. Yeah. So I literally go, ready? Scene. Get my acting face on, right? Hey, my name is Lauren. I'm a content creator from New York City. I was wondering if you were able to provide me with a contact for partnerships. I'm very interested in working with you guys. Thank you so much. Smiley face. And then usually they'll send me their contact for their PR people, their influencer marketing people. And I think if you're just like really direct, I used to even say like way back in like way back in the day. I would be like, I'm interested in making like a sponsored YouTube video or Instagram post for you guys. Like I literally would say, now I just don't care. I'm just like, okay, whatever, whatever, whatever. You know what I mean? I just like send it. But I even used to say stuff like that. I, I really like what Taylor was saying because that's what my like manager guy was saying yesterday. I was talking to him about it. He was like, wait, I'm going to read you guys what he said because I think it'd be really valuable for you to hear. I was saying if I should circle back with some company or whatever I was even saying. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Sorry. Okay. They're definitely a good idea. Share a vision with them. Talk about the benefits with them and why you would feel it would be a good idea for them. Come in with value and a clear idea and it will make her job to say yes a lot easier. So essentially what Taylor was saying, but I think that's like really smart that he even like mentioned that. I don't know. I think the whole idea of adding value is like so important. And I think that anytime you're pitching a brand, I personally like do the more add value on a more professional platform. So like say I'm emailing them or something like that. Like my DMs are usually just like a cold kind of, okay, I need the email type of thing. Oh, that's cute. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> but yeah, it really just depends. Did that answer the question? Sorry. I don't know if that helped, but. Sorry for my intermission, guys. <laughs> yeah, that was awesome. Amazing. I got to balance in three minutes, but. And then uh, see you after. Yes. Time. Guys, Taylor's going to be on my podcast. That's so exciting. exciting. Yeah. Um, so I feel like the next step for a lot of us is just making the media kit. That way, if a brand like, I don't know. I feel like there's no sense in reaching out to people and then having them be like, yeah, send over your media kit and then not having one. So at least for me, I feel like that's going to be my next step. So maybe we can on a call, like throw one of ours up and kind of critique it and stuff before we actually send it out. I don't know if you guys like that idea for next week. Okay, cool. Does anyone have any other questions? I don't want to keep it too long. Okay, so the next meeting is Monday at 7 p.m. If you can come, it will be super fun, and we'll keep going with this topic because I feel like there's just, like, a lot of layers of it, and um, I'll have my media kit. I can do the first one to, like, throw up and have people kind of give critiques. So thank you guys for coming, and we'll see you soon. Hi, Jordan McKenzie. Happy birthday. Thank <laughs> you.